Hey, just to start off for, because I mentioned that a lot of the subscribers to my channel probably are unfamiliar, and I know I wasn't familiar up until maybe my last year of university, what is it that an actuary does? So it's it's a good question. I mean, and we, we always have a little joke in the industry. It's like, how many marks is this question for? Because we, I think, yeah, actuaries are notorious for writing exams. We write lots and lots of exams, so we, we kind of are very good at, at answering uh, exam questions. And I think the one mock answer is that actuaries confront risk. So normally in the financial domain, and we try and prepare for an uncertain future. What we found is that this tends to put us in the financial industries. That's kind of where we're traditionally placed. But there is a big movement in actuarial science to tap into what we call the wider fields. And this means going into all sorts of things, whether it's climate change, uh, whether it's uh, nonprofit organizations, even sports, um, anything where there's uncertainty in the future, actuaries love to go in and, and play. And essentially what we say is we have this belief that the past is an indicator of the future. So we use what happened in the past, the data and all of that, and we use that as the, the foundation for our models to forecast. And then we say, if this is what happened in the past, this is what might happen in the future. Maybe we should do some things differently now so that we're not, yeah, we're not destroyed by the future. So some people like to, to refer to, to actuaries as risk managers. Um, and I guess that is part of the, the job. Uh, you know, we are identifying uh, risks, we are measuring risks, we are managing them, we are monitoring them. Um, but it's why I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant is because, yeah, you don't want to put, because there's so many different types of actuaries, you don't want to put them in a box because another actuary might be listening and saying, hey, that's that's very different to what, what I do. Um, for myself, or, or what tends, tends to happen in, in actuarial science here in South Africa, and we follow very much what happens in, in, in England, the UK, because you know we were previously a colony of the UK. So we kind of have a very similar structure to them where there's eight technical exams. It's probably changed now because sometimes they combine the exams, but there's, there's a lot of technical subjects. And this is like statistics, mathematics, financial engineering, all these kind of things, economics, accounting, all your technical subjects, which all your actuaries do. Then there's some application subjects such as communication, model documentation, and then one that puts fear in every single actuarial student's uh, mind. It's called CA1, but they have renamed this exam to something else, but it's called actuarial risk management. It's a monster exam because you have to learn about the pension industry, the life insurance industry, the general insurance industry, the health insurance industry, and the financial industry all in one exam. It's so big that it's written over three days. You write it on one day, have a day rest, and then you go in and you write some more. So it's a monster exam. But once you pass that, you become an associate actuary. And when you're an associate actuary, you get into the profession, you get all the perks, all that kind of stuff. You can then go and choose two subjects to specialize in. So I specialized in finance and risk management. And then depending on what you specialized in, depends on what you can write your fellowship in. So you could do your fellowship in life insurance, which is what traditional or the very first actuaries did. You know, when do people die? How much money should they set aside for their widow? Um, there's the general insurance actuary, which is your car accidents, your pension um, actuary. With my two, it allowed me to either go into banking to become a banking actuary, which is very, very new. It's kind of within like the last five years at this fellow actuary has, has emerged. Um, essentially, yeah, just to help banks manage their credit risk and liquidity risk. Um, so that's one that I could have taken where instead I chose to do the financial actuary. So financial applications, investments, and all that type of stuff. And what was interesting about that fellowship is that if I was to show you the curriculum for that subject, being a CFA, you'd be like, hold on, this looks incredibly familiar because it's almost like I was actually comparing before this, this conversation, the CFA syllabus for level three and my financial um, fellowship. And it's very, very close. I mean, bas basically everything that you guys do for level three, we're doing as, as well. Um, and even when we were writing the exam, we would sometimes be put in a group with CFA level three guys. We would follow their blogs. I was reading a lot of CFA material for my exam. So 
there's the subject matter is very very similar of course the work wise position is slightly different so where a CFA is kind of you know asset managers and we manage people's money you know generally like whoever needs money to be managed you go to your CFA and they can assist the actuarial um, financial application is very much for your institutions so your life insurers, your general insurers, your pension funds, all of these people have a lot of money that they need to invest. And as an actuary, one of the things that, because we've learned all about these institutions, we understand their liability profile very well. So we will normally assist these companies develop their investment strategy, kind of help them construct their portfolio, and we will give them advice on which CFA manager to go to. So we actually almost interview CFA managers and we kind of say, okay, you know, what is your philosophy to the market? What is your time frame? What market conditions does your thing work for? And if it aligns with our client's intentions, then we say, okay, these are, this is a good match. And then the the pension fund will say, okay, let's give a hundred million to the CFA manager. And then the actuary's job's not done yet. We will then be part of that monitoring team. So we'll see, did you actually have any, you know, style drift like you said you're going to be passive but you ended up selecting stocks you know what's up with that um or gosh you thought you're going to have a very low tracking error but it ended up being quite large you know so we would investigate monitor so we could be your worst nightmare or we could be your best friend your best friend in the sense that we can send a lot of money your way worst nightmare in the sense that we kind of police what you guys are doing if you're investing money for these actuarial institutions um, and Joe, I guess another big difference with CFA and Actuary is CFA is, is global, which is great from a branding perspective. I mean, everyone kind of knows what a CFA is. You know, you kind of see the logo when you're on Reddit and you see the ads pop. With Actuaries, you kind of very much more local. So I guess the only difference with the syllabus would be like, especially for my one, there was a big focus on South Africa's financial history, South Africa's tax law, South Africa's regulations, because you can imagine, like if you're just learning finance, like just a very crude example, we kind of told you buy into an exchange traded fund if you want diversification. In South Africa, that wasn't always the case because our stock market was kind of smaller. Um, it was dominated by gold shares and mining shares, specifically in the late 90s, which means buying into an ETF did not really give you sector diversification. Um, it wasn't worth, you know, the management fees that go into an ETF because, yeah, the, the stock market was so dominated by, by gold. So it's one of those things where South Africa, or, or what you do as an actuary, is you learn maybe a little bit more specific to your region. Um, but yeah, I would say that's maybe the big differences is actuaries may be specific to institutions, where CFA may be more general um, and actuaries are more local focused, where CFA is more, more global.